Hello guys, apologies if I look a little tired this morning. I was up between 3 and 7 this morning watching UFC 259, which is what this episode is going to be about. I'm going to keep this episode concise because I am really tired and I tend to ramble and kind of just walk miles away from the topic area when I am in a tired state. So what I'm going to do, I wrote down some notes after the fight. Um, I'm just going to talk you through kind of my take home messages after um, I say the fight, after the fights, after the card. Um, I only watched the main card, I'll be honest, um, as I didn't want to be up between sort of midnight and 7 in the morning as I'd just be a zombie today. So I went to sleep at 11 and got up at 3. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through kind of my take home messages from each of the main card bouts. Um, based on the notes I took, um, as I figured my brain wouldn't be uh, very put together this morning. Uh, but these are my take home messages for UFC 259 with a little statement at the end um, surrounding um, Aljo versus uh, Peter Yan, um, what I think um, happened there, whether I think it was fair, um, and what I think will happen in the future. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy, uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed the card. I thought it was an excellent one, really, really stacked, and many of the main fights delivered as promised. So these are just the notes I took down last night um, because I was exhausted. Um, I figured that this morning my head would be a little unclear, so I thought I'd write down exactly what I thought, just a stream of consciousness there and then. These notes, they're not very technical, they're not very detailed, it's just my thoughts. Um, I might do another video at a later point which goes into more detail into some of these bouts, but this was just my initial emotions and feelings after uh, watching the main card. So I put, Polish power, come on yarn. What a beast, a superb display against pound for pound number two in Israel Adesanya in my opinion. In the latter rounds he dominated him with a stiff jab, bear like wrestling skills, strength, tenacity and ruggedness. So so happy for him. Actually felt choked watching his post fight interview. Now as an aside to this, sorry, something I did pick up upon in the bout. God damn, Israel Adesanya's knees are like made of elastic. Like watching him constantly fating those question mark kicks and sometimes obviously uh, when Jan isn't biting on the feints, which Jan was biting on most of them, he'd obviously throw that question mark kick, but his knees were in a constant state of gyration, like, uh, I don't know how he does it, his flexibility and athleticism just, just astounds me technical display as per usual is he looked superb, you know, <clears throat> really really light on his feet. Uh, just just technically brilliant you know and and those who know know those people who practice kicking arts like to have the flexibility to constantly wrench your knees at awkward angles for 25 minutes yeah i mean he's a he's a special caliber of athlete um i would have torn multiple ligaments trying to do what he was doing even if it was just on a bag not against an active opponent so yeah his knees are made of elastic man he's such a talent and he'll bounce back listen izzy is still for me you know, pound for pound, two slash three. He is a superb athlete, okay? I think that the 20 pounds in weight that he gave away to Jan was the difference. When he was taken down, Jan is the more imposing character. He's physically stronger. Um, he's just got a bigger frame as well. He's wider set. He is built like a bear. Um, and fundamentally, that made the difference, is he couldn't get Jan off him. Because although Jan was exhausted, you could hear... Jan's heavy breathing um, in rounds four and five, Jan just needed to weigh on him and Izzy simply didn't have the strength at the weight he was to get Jan off him and I also don't believe he had the technical skills to deal with Jan when he was uh, moving between mounts. I actually think Jan has more proficient wrestling skills. Uh, when it comes to jiu-jitsu I think they're about equal but I think Jan is the better wrestler and it did show. Um, I mean fundamentally um, Jan was maybe 20-30 seconds from finishing the fight when the fight ended because he had a full mount. Izzy tried to you know, raise his chest and his body and um, push Jan off, but Jan was too heavy and he couldn't move him off. And Jan was moving into you know, hammer fists and mean ground and pound just there at the end. And he looked comfortable when the klaxon sounded. You know, He beckoned his muscles and you know, looked dominant. He looked like a champion as he finished, but... Nobody can deny, right? Jan finished in full mount, and Izzy tried to buckle him off, and it failed. 
Um, I think Izzy was really tired, not in a cardiovascular sense, but I think his muscles were just burnt out from trying to wrestle with the bigger man. Um, you know, two rounds of being on his back and trying to fight his way back up. So, yeah, I mean, that was a that was a dominant display from Jan, in my opinion. First three rounds were close. Izzy was the more technical. You know, Jan landed the more uh, thunderous shots. Um, but fundamentally, if that had been five rounds of that, I would have expected the decision to go to Adesanya. So a great adjustment there from Jan. You know, like a true champion, came out in the championship rounds and dominated. Um, and to those who say he's a paper champ, uh, because of his record, I assume, I assume that's why you're saying it. Um, you know, you've got to look at context. You've got to look at the fact that stars make fights. I always say this. Jan, okay, was 2-4 in the UFC. Um, and he was nearly cut, okay, and his focus since then has been absolutely, like, razor sharp, and that's why he's doing as well as he is, um, because he has had a change of perspective, you know, and he's training harder than he ever has been before, he's in top shape, um, I think Jan is going to be champ for at least another three or four title defences, you know, I think he's got it in him to, uh, to keep this up, and he's in it for the long haul, he's a very complete fighter, that's the thing that people miss out on, He's very good at checking, uh, very good defensively. Um, he carries formidable power and can knock anyone out. But actually, you know, he's good with his shot selection. Um, he kicks to the head, kicks to the body, kicks to the legs, punches the body, punches the head. He's a good wrestler. He's got good takedown defense. His jiu-jitsu is okay. He gets by. Um, but I can't wait to see him in there against Glover Teixeira. That, that fight's going to be an absolute war cannot wait for it i think he beats Teixeira um based on the fact that Teixeira is obviously the better brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner but i think his takedown defense will be enough to spend most of the fight on the feet obviously Teixeira will get him down and it depends on how Jan reacts to that and how he adapts to that as to the outcome but i think on the feet Jan blahovic would piece him up um so obviously close to the time i'll do a more a comprehensive breakdown of that but i can't wait for that one the next fight in my notes i put uh, amanda nunes showing again why she's undoubtedly the goat of women's mma anderson didn't land a single shot on her she cleaned out 145 and outside of shevchenko 3 at 135 there's nobody left to challenge her claim to the throne the female equivalent of a prime silver as i've said before ahead of her time I then put, shame about Peter Jan. Is it Petter or is it Peter? I know he's Russian, I don't want to mispronounce it. I'll try Petter because I think that's it. Uh, shame about Petter Jan and Aljo. Unusual to see a fight lead to a belt changing hands due to a DQ due to an unintentional foul. Slash intentional foul, depending on your perspective. Uh, I bet Petter Jan was fuming with his corner. It's unclear as to whether it was a miscommunication from the corner or simply poor and misinformed advice. Um, but that knee to a downed opponent was as illegal as it gets. There's no excuse for that, despite the corner employing him to throw it. The fight absolutely had to be called. Aljo was heavily concussed. I really felt for him when he was handed the belt. He looked despondent. He didn't want to win the belt this way at all. The post-fight interview was sad to see, and shouldn't have happened in my opinion whilst he was concussed. Petter absolutely should not have raised his hand at the end though, uh, as Chuck Liddell touched upon, that, that wasn't a classy move. Uh, that intentional DQ was nothing to celebrate about, and there's no class in raising your hand as if you've won the bout fair and square. Respect to Petter though, I know he tweeted since and has apologised to Sterling and the fans, probably just got caught up in the moment. But now he's had time to take stock. I think he realises the gravity of what's happened. Jan's boxing looked impeccable as always. His garb was tight as hell. His trip game was solid. And he conserved his energy well throughout the bout. He paced himself well. Plus, he kept stinging search Sterling with sharp, accurate strikes. That's hard to say on a couple of hours sleep. Jan's takedown defence was incredible too leaving Sterling fatigued due to constant failed attempts to bring Jan to the ground. Sterling's legs were shot, he was exhausted, and he was on his way out when the DQ occurred. When they meet again, Jan will stop Sterling late uh, into the bout. Jan will be merciless, because he's got a point to prove now and a chip on his shoulder. I wish Sterling a speedy recovery and all the best to Petter Jan. 
Islam Makachev deserves a 1-5 to five ranked lightweight in my opinion after that performance. His wrestling skills are so tight. He's got hallmarks of Khabib, uh, which is no surprise as Khabib is his coach and mentor. They're both from Dagestan and he was originally trained by Khabib's late father. Finally, I was a little let down by Santos versus Rakic. I actually thought that could have been the bout of the night. I thought that could have been you know, fight of the night contention, but... I didn't uh, feel that, if I'm completely honest. I actually thought it was one of the least interesting of the main cards. Uh, if I had to rank them, I would probably put uh, Blahovic versus Adesanya first, uh, then uh, Petijan versus Aljo, then probably probably Makachev next, followed by Nunes, and then Santos versus Rakic. I put Rakic was KG. Uh, sorry, Santos versus Rakic was cagey and close. Rakic did enough. He was proficient in checking Santos's kicks. His head movement was tight and his defense was tight. Santos's knee was definitely still compromised though. His movement simply wasn't up to his usual standards. He wasn't as explosive or aggressive. After a torn PCL, MCL and LCL in one knee, a partially torn ACL in the other knee and a fractured tibia, I doubt whether he'll ever move the same again and no doubt has formed a permanent weakness in his knees due to the extent of the damage. He put on a display against Jones in a razor thin fight for five rounds but paid a hefty toll for it. Rakic was wary of Santos's power but noted his limited mobility, cracking his lead leg with inside leg licks. Leg licks. That would be an interesting mode of attack. Uh, inside leg kicks. His main mode of attack throughout the bout. Rakic, as always, looks strong, well-conditioned, intimidating. He just needs to step it up in terms of his pursuit of the finish, as this kind of performance won't fly against the likes of Blahovic, Teixeira, Reyes, Etik. So that was my take homes. That was my immediate take homes. That's kind of just the notes I wrote down after the card had finished, and then I went to sleep at about seven. Um, but just to tag on to that, um, I just want to add on a statement I made in relation to that uh, Petr Jan versus Aljo, the controversy in the belt swapping hands. So I'll move on to that now, summarize, and conclude. So I then wrote this down. This was in relation to the absolute wave of criticism that um, Aljo was receiving regarding the fact that he supposedly quit, the fact that he took a dive, the fact that he took the easy way out despite the fact he was losing, which um, despite the scorecards and not reflecting this, I did feel that was true. I felt that um, Petr Jan was dominating him and was leading towards a finish. Okay, but I did write this down and this is in relation to those people and what they had to say. Blatant illegal knee. No question. Blatant. So many armchair champs, keyboard warriors and digital marauders, as I suspected there would be. So many people who, no doubt, have no idea what it would be like to take a knee to the dome of the skull whilst down and fatigued against a professional fighter. He was definitely concussed. He doesn't even consider himself champion. He seemed genuinely gutted to have won it in that way in the post-fight interview. The fight was stopped, uh, which was ultimately the decision of the referee, but quite honestly, continuing with concussion would have been foolish. Do we forgive groin strikes? Eye pokes? After all, it isn't the fighter's responsibility to avoid using those legal strikes, but the other fighter's responsibility to condition their eyes and their cock and balls to be stronger. Otherwise, they're weak and they're acting as if they're hurt. True warriors can't be hurt and continue to fight regardless of being maimed, blinded, yada 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 bullshit. Everybody needs to relax. Jan will get a rematch. And Jan will stop Sterling late and Jan will get his belt back. Jan was dominating Sterling with his superb boxing skills, tight strike defence, almost unconquerable takedown defence, and better pacing. Um, I have no doubt that Jan will be uh, champion again and is the best bantamweight in the UFC. He will have his belt back, but an illegal knee cannot go unpunished as blatant as that one was. Okay, that was my take home from that. Um, sorry this hasn't been very discussion based, it's just been me reading off my notes which I made in the early hours of the morning, but quite honestly I'm too tired. I've already slipped up a few times in what I've been saying, getting tongue tied, and if I tried to formulate a uh, coherent argument right now it wouldn't go very well. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the card, I hope you find the analysis interesting. Um, 
and you can use that to kind of flavor my uh, pre-fight analysis which I made before of what I thought was going to happen and compare that and contrast it. Um, one thing I will say as a take home and as a final point, um, the Izzy that fought Blahovic gets smoked by Jones, straight up, smoked. Um, and it's done Izzy a bit of harm for Jones to see that performance against Blahovic because up until this point Izzy has been a phenom uh, and he hasn't really looked human except for against Gasselden. Um, but Jan has shown that a bigger, stronger man utilizing his wrestling skills can dominate Izzy. Um, now, of course, Izzy is going to learn, Izzy's going to adapt, Izzy's going to evolve. He's a very experienced and proficient martial artist. But, okay, Jones, in my opinion, uh, is the greatest mixed martial artist of all time. Now, if you're only counting that debate with regards to fighters who have only ever been um, cleared as clean throughout their career, so people who haven't been um, caught doping, then that title for me goes to GSP. But if I'm allowed Jones, Jones goes in there. So Jones is, is you know, his mind, his, his, his mixed martial arts mind is incredible. He's amazing at forming game plans and sticking to them. Um, he has amazing Greco-Roman wrestling skills. He's shown that time and time again. He would rag doll Izzy and he would dominate him. And this, like, 230-pound Jones, stacked, jacked, okay? If he drops back down to light heavyweight to meet Izzy at some point, to have that super fight that Dana's absolutely creaming over. Um, I mean, as fans, I am, I am excited to see it. But after seeing that, like, Izzy needs to do some more work at middleweight. Um, and he needs to fight possibly some other light heavyweights first before he goes in there against someone like Jones. He needs to fight some wrestlers, you know, some people who'd be willing to test their wrestling against him in the octagon. Um, I know he mentioned fighting Darren Till. Um, that doesn't really interest me, uh, if I'm completely honest, because Israel Adesanya is arguably the best striker in the MMA, uh, closely contested by Stephen Wonderboy Thompson if you're looking at pure striking. But I'm not really interested in seeing him fight Darren Till because I think he pieces Darren Till up with striking and Darren's not known for his wrestling so I don't really think he'd have much to offer Izzy that he hasn't seen before. I want to see Izzy in against somebody who is a really proficient wrestler. Um, I, I would love to see that. Say uh, Glover Teixeira loses to Jan Blahovic, um, why doesn't Izzy step up? You know, because he's already within that light heavyweight mindset, light heavyweight frame. I know he said he's dropping back down to middleweight, but if he's truly intent on proving himself against Jones, he needs to fight light heavyweights who've got legitimate, you know, Brazilian jiu jitsu and wrestling skills. Because otherwise, when he goes up to somebody of Jones's caliber, he'll get smoked. He will just get smoked, absolutely flattened, you know, dominated. So, yeah, no disrespect to Izzy. He's a, a, an incredible mixed martial artist, um, a really funny bloke, and probably the best uh, pure striker in the UFC. But his wrestling uh, needs development, his jiu-jitsu needs development, and he can't turn up underweight um, to light heavyweight bouts. I know it gives him the speed advantage, but the extra weight that Jan Blachowicz was carrying definitely paid dividends. All right then, guys. Well, take care, uh, stay safe, keep boxing, and see you for the next one. All right then.